Samsung's Galaxy devices, for the most part, barring the Google Play editions of course, do not run just stock Android. The Galaxy Note 3 is no exception here. Samsung's added their own custom user interface, a layer on top of Android called TouchWiz. While TouchWiz does bring a ton of functionality, a lot of features to the Galaxy Note 3, it does it can make things a little confusing as well. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the software on the Galaxy Note 3. This is everything you need to know about the software on the Galaxy Note 3. Tips, tricks, hidden features, and even a bit of basics. So before we get started, if this is your first time here or if you've just plain old forgotten, this is Asha and you're watching C4E Tech. The Galaxy Note 3 has a beautiful 5.7 inch 1080p display. So you think this makes it impossible to use this device single handed, right? Well, think again. You can just do this and the display actually shrinks. So now if you can use it with one hand, everything works just the way it should. You can run any apps you want. So say for example, I go into the Play Store. This works from almost anywhere. So we are back. So now again, there you go. Searching for something. Say Sudoku free. I've installed it. I'm back. You can do this with either side. So, say for example, I'm holding it with my left hand. There you go. And you can move it around. And if you think your fingers are too big and this just doesn't work for you, all right, you can make it a little bigger. You want to shrink it down, shrink it again. So it's pretty intelligent. So there you see, uh, you see the uh, buttons on top. When you move it to the left, they automatically shift. You can even control the volume from here so that you don't have to go hunting for the volume rocker. The back key, the home, and the menu keys are all available. So, so to get this feature to work, just go into settings. One-handed operations are from the controls tab. And make sure that use for all screens is checked. So now that we are in the one-handed operation, let's quickly go through it. Keypad and in-call buttons, Samsung Touch, uh, Samsung Keyboard Calculator, Unlock Pattern. All right, what are these? So now if you're in the keypad, so this is it for one-handed operation. Left or right, the keyboard is shrunk. The same thing uh, goes with the unlock screen and with the keyboard. So guys, also note that the capacitive keys can now detect the S Pen, so menu and back, you can... Uh, use it f uh, with the S Pen itself and another thing is once you see the S Pen detected these keys get deactivated so you're not gonna hit it say your your palm is resting on screen for something if the S Pen is detected you're not gonna hit back or menu accidentally I'm sure you know that the Galaxy Note 3 has a micro USB 3.0 port in case you didn't know this is also reverse compatible with micro USB 2 that is your regular charge cables these ones you can still plug that in for data connection or for charging the device it might charge a little slower but it will work all right it might transfer data a little slower as well but it will work all right talking about the micro usb port uh you might have heard the terms usb otg and usb host thrown around what does that actually mean for you what it means is you can buy these kind of cables these cost you around a dollar they are available from amazon.com i'll leave links right below the like button in the description what you can do is you can just plug them in and you can connect a flash drive all right so you can see usb mass storage connected and the my files app opens up just tap all that's usb drive a and this is the usb drive that's in apart from this you can even plug in a wireless receiver and use a mouse or keyboard with the galaxy note 3 You might have also heard that the micro USB port on the Note 3 is MHL enabled. MHL cables like this are what you use to mirror your phone's display onto big screen TVs. Okay, a lot of phones have this. What's so special? The Note 3 uses MHL version 2. Generally, with MHL adapters, you need to plug in a micro USB cable as well, which is connected to either a USB port or a wall adapter for power. With MHL version 2, you do not need any external power. It is just one adapter that you're going to use. Plug it into the micro USB port plug an HDMI cable into the other end. 
hook it up to a big screen TV and your Note 3's display is now mirrored. You get different types of screen locks. By default, you have swipe, which is no security. You also get a signature unlock apart from the regular pattern, pin, password. With the signature unlock, you can literally sign into your phone. You can set it up by going into settings, device, lock screen, screen lock. If you have an existing pin, just enter it and choose signature unlock. Talking about the lock screen, you see that I have C4E tech over there. How do you edit it? All right. You can enable or disable a personal message from here and you can just go in and edit the personal information there. I've got C4E tech. You can set whatever you want. You can change the font. You can change the colors. Um, choose whether you want time and date uh, displayed. You can do that from here. You get two different effects. One is the watercolor effect, the other is the ripple effect. So this is what uh, you get by default, the watercolor effect. And this is the ripple effect. And, and you can also enable the ink effect over here. So how that works is with the S Pen, you can see the ink bleeding. You can just change it to whatever color you want. This is available only with the ripple effect. So you can also have uh, enable action memo on lock screen. The help text is nothing but this swipe screen or say wake up command. You can enable or disable this. Press the button, double tap, and your action memo opens up. So this can be enabled on the lock screen. Again, from the same lock screen menu. You can also enable multiple widgets. So you can add other widgets. This is a, this is a regular uh, Jelly Bean feature, 4.2 feature. To the right, you get a set of your you know featured apps. So you can change it. You can just tap and hold something. Oh, I'm sorry. You can actually hit edit and delete something that you don't want, and you can add a different app uh, to fill up that slot instead. So asphalt eight. All right, so this is when you swipe to, to the right from the lock screen, you access this. But just like with stock Android, if you wanted to launch the camera while, sw while swiping to the right, just go into multiple widgets, favorite apps or camera, and select uh, camera, hit save. Now from the lock screen, just swipe to the right and it launches the camera. Enabling the shortcuts option over here gives you five uh, shortcuts on your lock screen. You can customize it, just tap it, select something else. So say for example, Google settings, calculator, and to do benchmark. So now in the lock screen, you can see these below. So you just need to drag one of these and it opens up. These are the clock widget options, pretty self-explanatory. So wake up in lock command. Okay, when you first go and set it up, it downloads a bit I'm just waiting for the download to finish now so you can actually set different wake up commands so say for example I want to launch open camera I mean launch the camera so open camera open camera open camera open camera all right done so now if, so now when you're in the lock screen you can just say open camera and the Note 3 launches the camera app. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's now talk a bit about the S Pen. The S Pen Keeper. This is a feature that we saw on the Galaxy Note 2. You leave your, you turn this on, you leave your S Pen and you walk away with the device. The phone vibrates and this alert message is displayed. The pointer is just this little pointer that you see. So you turn it off, you don't see it anymore. Turn it on. That's pretty much it. All right, direct pen input, let's get to that. Let's go into the messages app. So over here, just hover on top, you see a little icon, tap it. That enables hand handwriting recognition. The handwriting recognition on the Note 3 is amazing. Let me just show you. Now, I was just scribbling like crazy. It still managed to detect it. So now if you want to delete something, that's it. 
and you can do a lot more as well so just to show you going into direct pen input gesture guide so this is what you can do you can auto correct stuff delete it in one of these three ways again one single character delete insert stuff uh, and delete a space so that's that next up pen detachment options by default when you take the pen out it gives you the air command wheel just like you saw if that isn't that is something that annoys you you don't want that you can change it here you can change it to either open up an action memo or do nothing and then you have pen attached to that sound pretty self-explanatory the air commands part i pretty much talked about it in my full review so i'm just gonna play the clip right now you say when you pull the s pen out or if you just press the button on the s pen while hovering on screen a little circle pops up with a few options action memo kind of deciphers your handwriting and lets you do various stuff say if you take down a number you can call it or you can add it to contacts and so on and then you have scrapbooker with scrapbooker you can just select anything on screen and have it saved to your scrapbook scrapbooker while not just saving the image actually saves a hyperlink as well next we have screen write screen write basically grabs a screenshot of your screen and lets you add handwritten notes on it and now s finder s finder is basically search it pulls up everything on your phone first using file names location tags and more so right now when i search for note 3 it shows me the google search on chrome my emails with note 3 on it and then the scrapbook entry that we just made Finally, we have pen window. Using pen window, you can specify a size and as per the size you select, a window pops up. From here, you can select from a list of apps. Once you're done with the app, you can either close it or minimize it and it remains floating on screen, similar to the chat heads with Facebook Messenger. A few of these can be launched even without going into this wheel. All right, so say for example, action memo. You can launch ac action memo by pressing and holding this button and double tapping on screen. There you go. S Finder, you can launch it by pressing and holding the menu button. You can also add to your scrapbook by pressing and holding this button and quickly selecting something. You can get to screen right by tapping and holding this button and tapping the S Pen on screen and holding it. There you go. Barring three instances, no matter where you are, the R command wheel pops up. What are these three instances? First, when you're in the messages app, near the attachments, now hit, now hit the button. Instead of the R command wheel popping up, you get your last, uh, your recent pictures. So if you want to add an attachment over here, you can add it this way. This also works from the email app. Again, right next to the recipient, just hit this button and it shows you your frequently used contacts and then in the gallery when you're hovering over a picture hitting this button gives you options instead of the air command wheel so guys talking about the gallery over here by default you get uh, multiple panes so you can just swipe to hide it or swipe again to bring it up so this way you can easily jump between various albums you can also sort uh, the photos you have via albums, time, location, people, favorites, and all. And uh, you can pinch to zoom in or zoom out. So that's that. You can also quickly jump into the camera by tapping this icon here. And under settings, you can select content to display and add in your Facebook, Dropbox, uh, or Picasa content. So this is what i have in picasa so in contacts you can swipe right to call someone swipe left to message the same is applicable from the messages app as well and uh you can just slide over here to uh, jump between letters to get more control just swipe to the left and you get more granular control press and hold the home button it gives you a list of recently used apps this is your task manager So you can see what apps are active from here and it you also get the ram usage and the cpu usage of the respective apps you can go to download it and uninstall uninstall apps go to ram clear memory you can uh s switch between launchers this way if you have a custom launcher installed it would be over here so clearing it and then hitting 
home will give you options between different launchers so touch was home always that's it okay so now we've seen what pressing and holding the menu back and home keys does right but what about google now all right how does google now work on nexus devices you press and hold the home button and swipe up so let's do the same and that's google now what you're actually doing is just pressing and holding it and then selecting it but if you're used to stock android it still works pretty much the same way guys when i started shooting this video i did not expect to make it a two-parter but we are really out of time and i'm forced to split this video into two so click on the link that's annotated on the screen right now that will take you to the second part of this video i will also leave a link to the second part right below the like button in the description but before you go make sure you give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so i guess that's pretty much it for this part and i'll see you in the next one till then this is ash here from c4e tech signing off bye bye now